Don't just read NCERT. Listen it and feel it. physics textbook of class 11th part 2 chapter 12 thermodynamics narrated by isna rafat khan introduction in the previous chapter we have studied thermal properties of matter in this chapter we shall study laws that govern thermal energy we shall study the process where work is converted into heat and vice versa In winter when we rub our palms together we feel warmer here work done in rubbing produces heat conversely in a steam engine the heat of the steam is used to do the useful work in moving the pistons which in turn rotate the wheels to of the train in physics we need to define the notions of heat temperature work etc more carefully historically It took a long time to arrive at a proper concept of heat. Before the modern picture heat was regarded as a fine invisible fluid filling in the pores of a substance. On contact between a hot body and the cold body, the fluid called the caloric flowed from the colder body to the hotter body. This is similar to what happens when a horizontal pipe connects to two tanks containing water up to the different heights. The flow continues till the levels of the water in the two tanks are same. Likewise, in the caloric picture of heat, heat flows until the caloric levels equalize. In time the picture of heat as a fluid was discarded in favor of the modern concept of heat as a form of energy. An important experiment in this connection was due to the Benjamin Thomson in 1978. He observed that boring of a brass cannon generated a lot of heat, indeed enough to boil water. More significantly, the amount of heat produced depended on the work done, but not on the sharpness of the drill. In the caloric picture, the sharper drill would scoop out more heat fluid from the pores, but this was not observed. A more natural explanation of the observations was that heat was a form of energy and the experiments demonstrated conversion of energy from one form to another form of work to heat. Thermodynamics is a branch of physics that deals with the concepts of heat and temperature and the interconversion of the heat and other forms of energy. Thermodynamics is a macroscopic science. It deals with bulk systems and does not go into the molecular constitution of matter. In fact, its concept and laws were formulated in the 19th century before the molecular picture of matter was firmly established. Thermodynamics description involves relatively few macroscopic variables of the system which are suggested by common sense and can be usually measured directly. A microscopic description of a gas therefore for example would involve specifying the coordinates and the velocities of huge number of molecules constituting the gas the description in the kinetic theory of gas is not so detailed but it does involve molecular distribution of velocities Thermodynamic description of a gas on the other hand avoids the molecular description altogether Instead the state of gas in the thermodynamics is specified by macroscopic variables such as pressure volume temperature mass and composition that are felt by our sense perceptions and are measurable the distinction between mechanics and thermodynamics is worth bearing in mind in mechanics our interest is in the motion of particles or bodies under the action of force and torques thermodynamics is not concerned with the motion of the system as a whole it is concerned with the internal macroscopic state of the body when a bullet is fired from a gun what changes is the mechanical state of the bullet its kinetic energy in particular 
not its temperature. When the bullet pierces a wood and stops, the kinetic energy of the bullet gets converted into heat, changing the temperature of the bullet and the surrounding layers of wood. Temperature is related to the energy of the internal disordered motion of the bullet, not to the motion of the bullet as a whole. Thermal Equilibrium Equilibrium in mechanics means that the net external force and torque on the systems are zero. The term equilibrium in thermodynamics appears in a different context. We say that the state of a system is an equilibrium state with a macroscopic variables that characterize the systems do not change in time. For example, a gas inside a closed rigid container completely insulated from its surroundings with fixed values of pressure, volume, temperature, mass and composition that do not change with time is in the state of thermodynamic equilibrium. In general, whether or not a system is in a state of equilibrium depends on the surroundings and the nature of the wall that separates the systems from the surrounding. Consider the two gases A and B occupying two different containers. We know experimentally that pressure and volume of a given mass of the gas can be chosen to be its two independent variables. Let the pressure and the volume of the gas be PAVA and PBVB respectively. Suppose first that the two systems are put in proximity but are separated by an adiabatic wall, an insulating wall can be movable and does not allow the flow of energy or heat from one to another. The system are insulated from the rest of the surroundings also by the similar adiabatic walls. The situation is shown schematically in figure 12.1a. In this case, it is found that any possible pair of values PA, VA will be in equilibrium with any possible pair of values PB, VB. Next, suppose that the adiabatic wall is replaced by a diathermic wall, a conducting wall that allows energy flow heat from one to another. It is then found that the macroscopic variables of the system A and B change spontaneously until the both systems attain equilibrium states. After that, there is no change in the state. The situation is shown in figure 12.1b. The pressure and the volume variables of the two gases change to P-B, V-B and P-A, V-A such that the new states of A and B are in equilibrium with each other. There is no more energy flow from one to another. We then say that the system A is in the thermal equilibrium with the system B. What characterizes the situation of thermal equilibrium between two systems? You can guess the answer from your experience. In thermal equilibrium, the temperature of the two systems are equal. We shall see how does one arrives at the concept of temperature in thermodynamics. The Zeroth law of thermodynamics provides the clue. Zeroth law of thermodynamics Imagine two systems A and B separated by an adiabatic wall. While each is in contact with the third system C, via a conducting wall. The states of the system, that is their macroscopic variables, will change until both A and B comes to thermal equilibrium with C. After this is achieved, suppose that adiabatic wall between A and B is replaced by a conducting wall and C is insulated from A and B by an adiabatic wall. It is found that the states of A and B change no further, that is, they are found to be in thermal equilibrium with each other. This observation forms the basis of the Zeroth law of thermodynamics, which states that two systems in the thermal equilibrium with a third system separately are in thermal equilibrium with each other. 
R. H. Fowler formulated this law in 1931, long after the first and the second law of thermodynamics were stated and so numbered the zeroth law. The zeroth law clearly suggests that when two systems A and B are in thermal equilibrium, there must be a physical quantity that has the same value for both. The thermodynamic variable whose value is equal for two systems in thermal equilibrium is called temperature. Thus, if A and B are separated in equilibrium with C, Ta is equal to Tc and Tb is equal to Tc. This implies that Ta is equal to Tb. That is, the systems A and B are also in thermal equilibrium. We have arrived at the concept of temperature formally via the zeroth law. The next question is how to assign the numerical values to the temperature of different bodies. In other words, how do we construct a scale of temperature? Thermometry deals with the basic question to which we return in the next section. Heat, Internal Energy and Work The Zeroth Law of Thermodynamics led us to the concept of temperature that agrees with our common sense notion. Temperature is a marker of the hotness of a body. It determines the direction of flow of heat when two bodies are placed in thermal contact. Heat flows from the body at the higher temperature to the one at the lower temperature. The flow stops when the temperature equalizes. The two bodies are then in thermal equilibrium. We saw in some details how to construct temperature scales to assign temperature to different bodies. We now describe the concept of heat and other relevant quantities like internal energy and work. The concept of internal energy of a system is not difficult to understand. We know that every bulk system consists of a large number of molecules. Internal energy is simply the sum of the kinetic energies and the potential energies of these molecules. We remarked earlier that in thermodynamics, the kinetic energy of the system as a whole is not relevant. Internal energy is thus the sum of molecular kinetic energies and the potential energies in the frame of reference relative to which the center of mass of the system is at rest. Thus, it includes only the disordered energy associated with the random motion of molecules of the system. We denote the internal energy of a system by U. Though we have invoked the molecular picture to understand the meaning of internal energy, as far as the thermodynamics is concerned, U is simply a macroscopic variable of the system. The important thing about the internal energy is that it depends only on the state of the system, not how that state is achieved. The internal energy U of the system is an example of the thermodynamic state variable. Its value depends only on the given state of the system, not on history, that is, not on the path taken to arrive that state. Thus, an internal energy of a given mass of a gas depends on its state described by the specific value of pressure, volume and temperature. It does not depend on how this state of gas came about. Pressure, volume, temperature and internal energy are thermodynamic state variables of the system. If we neglect the small intermolecular forces in a gas, the internal energy of a gas is just the sum of kinetic energies associated with the various random motion of its molecules. We will see in the next chapter that in a gas, this motion is not only translational, motion from one point to another in a volume of the container. It also includes rotational and vibrational motion of the molecule. What are the ways of changing internal energy of a system? Consider again, for simplicity, the system to be a certain mass of gas contained in a cylinder with a movable piston as shown in figure 12.4. 
experience shows that there are two ways of changing the state of a gas and hence its internal energy one way is to put the cylinder in contact with the body at higher temperature than that of gas the temperature difference will cause a flow of energy from the hotter body to the gas thus increasing the internal energy of the gas the other way is to push the piston down that is to do work on the system which again results in the increasing internal energy of the gas of course both of these could happen in the reverse direction with surroundings at a lower temperature heat would flow from the gas to the surroundings likewise the gas could push the piston up and do work on the surroundings in short heat and work are the two different modes of altering the state of a thermodynamic system and changing its internal energy the notion of heat should be clearly distinguished from the notion of internal energy heat is certainly energy but it is the energy in transit this is not just a play of words the distinction is of the basic significance the state of a thermodynamic system is characterized by the internal energy not heat a statement like a gas in a given state has certain amount of heat is meaningless as the statement that a gas in a given state has a certain amount of work in contrast a gas in a given state has a certain amount of internal energy is a perfectly meaningful statement similarly the statement a certain amount of heat is supplied to a system or a certain amount of work was done by the system are perfectly meaningful to summarize the heat and work in the thermodynamics are not state variables they are modes of the energy transfer to a system resulting in the change in its internal energy which as already mentioned is a state variable in ordinary language we often confuse heat with internal energy the distinction between them is sometimes ignored in elementary physics books for proper understanding of thermodynamics however the distinction is very crucial first law of thermodynamics we have seen that the internal energy u of the system can change through two modes of energy transfer heat and work let dq is equals to the heat supplied to the system by the surroundings delta w is equals to the work done by the system on the surroundings delta u is equals to the change in the internal energy of the system the general principle of conservation of energy then implies that delta q is equals to delta u plus delta w that is the change in energy delta q supplied to the system goes in partly to increase the internal energy of the system and the rest in the work on the environment equation 12.1 that is delta q is equals to delta u plus delta w is known as the first law of thermodynamics it is simply the general law of conservation of energy applied to any system in which the energy transfer from or to the surroundings is taken into account let us put this equation in an alternative form delta q minus delta w is equals to delta u now the system may go from an initial state to the final state in a number of ways for example to change the state of a gas from p1 v1 to p2 v2 we can change the volume of the gas from v1 to v2 keeping its pressure constant that is we can first go to the state p1 v2 and then the change in the pressure of the gas from p1 to p2 keeping the volume constant to take the gas to p2 v2 alternatively we can first keep the volume constant and then keep the pressure constant since u is a state variable delta u depends only on the initial and the final states and not on the path taken by the gas to go from one to the other however delta q and delta w will in general depend on the path taken to go from the initial and the final states from the first law of thermodynamics it is clear that the combination 
delta q minus delta w is however path independent this shows that if a system is taken through a process in which delta u is equals to zero for example isothermal expansion of an ideal gas delta q is equals to delta w that is heat supplied to the system is used up entirely by the system in doing work on the environment if the system is a gas in the cylinder with a movable piston the gas in the moving piston does work since force is pressure times area the area times displacement is volume work done by the system against a constant pressure p is delta w is equals to p delta v where delta v is the change in volume of the gas thus for this case delta q is equals to delta u plus p delta v as an application of this equation consider the change in internal energy for 1 gram of water when we go from its liquid to the vapor phase the measured latent heat of the water is 2256 joules per gram that is for 1 gram of water delta q is equals to 2256 joules at atmospheric pressure 1 gram of water has the volume 1 cm cube in the liquid phase and 1671 cm cube in the vapor phase therefore delta w is equals to p vg minus v1 is equals to 1.013 into 10 to the power 5 into 1670 into 10 to the power minus 6 is equals to 169.2 joules delta u is equals to 2256 minus 169.2 is equals to 2086.8 joules we see that the most of the heat goes to increase the internal energy of the water in transition from the liquid to the vapor phase specific heat capacity suppose an amount of heat delta q is supplied to a substance change its temperature from t to t plus delta t we define heat capacity of a substance to be s is equals to delta q by delta t we expect delta q and therefore the heat capacity s to be proportional to the mass of the substance Further, it could also depend on the temperature, that is, a defined amount of heat may be needed for a unit rise in temperature at different temperatures. To define a constant characteristic of the substance and independent of its amount, we divide S by mass of the substance M in kgs. S is known as the specific heat capacity of the substance. It depends on the nature of the substance and its temperature. The unit of the specific heat capacity is Joule per kg per Kelvin. If the amount of the substance is specified in terms of moles mu instead of mass m in kg, we can define the heat capacity per mole of the substance by C is equals to capital S by mu is equals to 1 by mu into delta Q by delta T. C is known as molar specific heat capacity of the substance. Like S, C is independent of the amount of substance. C depends on the nature of the substance, its temperature and the condition under which the heat is supplied. The unit of C is joules per mole per Kelvin. As we shall see later in connection with the specific heat capacity of the gases, additional conditions may be needed to define C or S. The idea in defining C is that simple predictions can be made in regard to molar specific heat capacities. In Table 12.1 list the major specific and the molar heat capacities of solids at atmospheric pressure at ordinary room temperatures. We will see in Chapter 13 that predictions of the specific heat of the gas generally agree with experiment. We can use the same law of equipartition of energy that we use there to predict molar specific heat capacities of solids. Consider a solid of n atoms, each vibrating about its mean position. An oscillator in one dimension has average energy of 2 into half kbt is equals to kbt in three dimensions. The average energy is equals to 3 kbt 
for a mole of a solid the total energy is u is equals to 3 kbt into n a is equals to 3 rt now at the constant pressure delta q is equals to delta u plus p delta v is equals to delta u since for a solid delta v is negligible Therefore, C is equals to delta Q by delta T is equals to delta U by delta T is equals to 3R. As the table 12.1 shows, the experimentally measured values which generally agrees with the predicted value of 3R at ordinary temperatures, the agreement is known to break down at low temperatures. A specific heat capacity of water. The old unit of heat was calorie. One calorie was earlier defined to be the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. With more precise measurements, it was found that the specific heat of water varies slightly with temperature. Figure 12.5 shows this variation in temperature range 0 to 100 degrees Celsius. For a precise definition of calorie, it was therefore necessary to specify the unit temperature interval. One calorie is defined to be the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water from 14.5 degrees Celsius to 15.5 degrees Celsius. Since the heat is just a form of energy, it is preferable to use the unit joule, J. In SI units, the specific heat capacity of water is 4186 joules per kg per Kelvin, that is 4.186 joules per gram per Kelvin. The so-called mechanical equivalent of heat, defined as the amount of work needed to produce one calorie of heat is in fact just a conversion factor between two different units of energy calorie to joule. Since in SI units, we use the unit joule for heat, work and other any forms of energy, the term mechanical equivalent is now superfluous and is not need to be used. As already remarked, the specific heat capacity depends on the process or the condition under which heat capacity transfer takes place. For gases, for example, we can define two specific heats, a specific heat capacity at constant volume and a specific heat capacity at constant pressure. For an ideal gas, we have a simple relation, Cp minus Cv is equals to R, where Cp and Cv are molar specific heat capacities of an ideal gas at constant pressure and volume respectively and R is the universal gas constant. To prove this relation, we begin with equation 12.3 for one mole of the gas. Delta Q is equals to delta U plus P delta V. If delta Q is absorbed at constant volume, delta V is equals to zero. Arranging all the equations, we see that for a mole of an ideal gas, PV is equals to RT. Thermodynamic state variables and equation of state. Every equilibrium state of thermodynamic system is completely described by the specific values of some macroscopic variables, also called state variables. For example, an equilibrium state of a gas is completely specified by values of pressure, volume, temperature, and mass. A thermodynamic system is not always in equilibrium. For example, a gas allowed to expand freely against vacuum is not an equilibrium state. During the rapid expansion, the pressure of a gas may not be uniform throughout. Similarly, a mixture of gas undergoing an explosive chemical reaction, example a mixture of petrol vapor and air, when ignited by a spark, is not an equilibrium state. Again, its temperature and pressure are not uniform. Eventually, the gas attains a uniform temperature and pressure and comes to thermal and mechanical equilibrium with its surroundings. In short, thermodynamic state variables describe equilibrium state of systems. 
thus various state variables are not necessarily independent the connection between the state variables is called the equation of a state for example for an ideal gas the equation of a state is the ideal gas relation pv is equals to mu rt for a fixed amount of gas that is given mu there are thus only two independent variables say p and v for t and v the pressure volume curve for a fixed temperature is called an isotherm real gas may have more complicated equations of state the thermodynamic state variables are of two kinds extensive and intensive extensive variables indicate the size of the system intensive variables such as pressure and temperatures do not to decide which variable is extensive and which is intensive think of a relevant system in equilibrium and imagine that it is divided into two equal parts the variables that remain unchanged for each part are intensive the variables whose values get halved in each parts are extensive it is easily seen for example that internal energy u volume v total mass m are extensive variables pressure p temperature t and density rho are intensive variables it is a good practice to check the consistency of thermodynamic equations using this classification of variables for example in the equation delta q is equals to delta u plus p delta v quantities on both sides are extensive the product of an intensive variable like p and an extensive quantity delta v is extensive thermodynamic process quasi static process consider a gas in thermal and mechanical equilibrium with its surroundings the pressure of the gas in that case equals the external pressure and its temperature is same as that of its surroundings suppose that the external pressure is suddenly reduced say by lifting the weight on the movable piston in the container the piston will accelerate outwards during the process the gas passes through the states that are not in equilibrium states the non equilibrium states do not have well defined pressure and temperature in the same way if a finite temperature difference exists between a gas and its surroundings there will be a rapid exchange of heat during which the gas will pass through the non equilibrium states in due course the gas will settle to an equilibrium state with well defined temperatures and pressure equal to those of the surroundings the free expansion of a gas in vacuum and a mixture of gas undergoing an explosive chemical reaction mentioned in section 12.7 are also examples where the system goes through non equilibrium states non equilibrium states of a system are difficult to deal with it is therefore convenient to imagine an idealized process in which at every stage the system is in equilibrium state such a process is in principle infinitely slow hence the name quasi static meaning nearly static the system changes its variables p t v so slowly that it remains in thermal and mechanical equilibrium with its surroundings throughout in a quasi static process at every stage the difference in the pressure of the system and the external pressure is infinitesimally small the same is true of the temperature difference between the system and its surroundings to take a gas from state p t to another state p dash t dash via a quasi static process we change the external pressure by a very small amount allow the system to equalize its pressure with that of its surroundings and continue the process infinitely slowly until the system achieves the pressure p dash similarly to change its temperature 
we introduce an infinitesimal temperature difference between the systems and the surrounding reservoirs and by choosing reservoirs of progressively different temperatures t to t dash the system achieves the temperature t dash a quasi static process is obviously a hypothetical construct in practice process are sufficiently slow and do not involve accelerated motion of piston the large temperature gradient etc are reasonably approximation to an ideal quasi static process we shall from now on deal with quasi static process only except when stated otherwise a process in which the temperature of a system is kept fixed throughout is called an isothermal process the expansion of gas in a metallic cylinder placed in a large reservoir of fixed temperature is an example of an isothermal process heat transferred from the reservoir to the system does not materially affect the temperature of the reservoir because it's a very large heat capacity in isobaric process the pressure is constant while in isochoric process the volume is constant Finally if the system is insulated from the surroundings and no heat flows between the system and the surroundings the process is adiabatic the definitions of these special process are summarized in a table isothermal temperature constant isobaric pressure constant isochoric volume constant adiabatic no heat flow between the system and surrounding delta q is equals to 0 we now consider these process in some details isothermal process for an isothermal process t fixed the ideal gas equation gives pv is equals to constant that is pressure of a given mass of gas varies inversely as its volume it is nothing but the boyle's law Suppose an ideal gas goes isothermally at temperature T from its initial state P1 V1 to the final state P2 V2 at any intermediate stage with pressure P and volume change from V to V plus V dash delta W is equals to P delta V taking delta V approaching to 0 and summing the quantity delta W over the entire process W is equals to R T natural log V two by V one, where in the second step we have made use of ideal gas equation P V is equals to mu R T, and taken the constant out of the integral. For an ideal gas, internal energy depends only on temperature. Thus, there is no change in the internal energy of an ideal gas in an isothermal process. The first law of thermodynamics then implies that heat supplied to the gas equals the work by the gas. Q is equals to W. Note from equation 12.12 that for V2 greater than V1, W is greater than zero, and for V2 less than V1, W is less than zero. That is, in an isothermal expansion, the gas absorbs heat and does work, while in an isothermal compression, work is done on the gas by environment, and heat is released. adiabatic process in an adiabatic process the system is insulated from the surroundings and the heat absorbed or released is zero from equation 12.1 we see that the work done by the gas results in decrease in the internal energy and hence its temperature for an ideal gas we quote without proof the result that you will learn from the higher courses that for an adiabatic process of an ideal gas pv gamma is equals to constant where gamma is the ratio of specific heats ordinarily or molar at constant pressure and at constant volume gamma is equals to cp by cv Thus if an ideal gas undergoes a change in its state adiabatically from P1 V1 to P2 V2 P1 V1 to the power gamma is equals to P2 V2 to the power gamma figure 
12.8 shows the PV curves of ideal gas for two adiabatic process connecting two isotherms. Isochoric process. In an isochoric process, V is constant. No work is done on or by the gas. From equation 12.1, the heat absorbed by the gas goes entirely to change its internal energy and its temperature. The change in temperature of a given amount of heat is determined by a specific heat of gas at constant volume. Isobaric process. In an isobaric process, P is fixed. Work done by the gas is W is equals to P, V2 minus V1 is equals to mu R, T2 minus T1. Since temperature changes, so does the internal energy. The heat absorbed goes partly to increase internal energy and partly to do work. The change in temperature for a given amount of heat is determined by the specific heat of the gas at constant pressure. Cyclic process. In a cyclic process, the system returns to its initial state. Since internal energy is a state variable, delta U is equals to zero. For a cyclic process, from equation 12.1, the total heat absorbed equals the work done by the system. Heat engines. Heat engine is a device by a system is made to undergo a cyclic process that results in conversion from heat to work. It consists of a working substance, the system, for example, a mixture of fuel, vapor, and air in a gasoline or diesel engine, or steam in a steam engine are the working substances. The working substance goes through a cycle consisting of several processes. In some of these processes, it absorbs a total amount of heat Q1 from an external reservoir at some high temperature T1. In some other process of the cycle, the working substance releases a total amount of heat Q2 to an external reservoir at some lower temperature T2. The work done W by the system in a cycle is transferred to the environment via some arrangement. Example, the working substance may be in a cylinder with a moving piston that transfers mechanical energy to the wheels of a vehicle via a shaft. The basic features of a heat engine are schematically represented in figure 12.9. The cycle is repeated again and again to get useful work for some purpose. The discipline of thermodynamics has its root in the study of heat engines. A basic question relates to the efficiency of a heat engine. The efficiency of a heat engine is defined by eta is equals to W by Q1, where Q1 is the heat input, that is the heat absorbed by the system in one complete cycle, and W is the work done on the environment in a cycle. In a cycle, a certain amount of heat Q2 may also be rejected to the environment. Then, according to the first law of thermodynamics over one complete cycle, W is equals to Q1 minus Q2, that is, eta is equals to 1 minus Q2 by Q1. For Q2 is equals to 0, eta is equals to 1, that is, the engine will have 100% efficiency in converting heat into work. Note that the first law of thermodynamics, that is the energy conservation law, does not rule out such an engine. But experiences shows that such an ideal engine with efficiency is equals to 1 is never possible. Even if we can eliminate various kind of losses associated with actual heat engines, it turns out that there is a fundamental limit on the efficiency of a heat engine set by an independent principle of nature called the second law of thermodynamics. The mechanism of conversion of heat into work varies for different heat engines. Basically, there are two ways. The system, say a gas or a mixture of gas is heated by an external furnace as a steam engine or as it is heated internally by an exothermic chemical reaction as in the internal combustion engine, 
The various steps involved in a cycle also differs from one engine to another. For the purpose of general analysis, it is useful to conceptualize a heat engine as having the following essential ingredients. Refrigerators and heat pumps. A refrigerator is a reverse of a heat engine. Here the working substance extracts heat Q2 from cold reservoir and temperature T2. Some external work W is done on it and heat Q1 is released to the hot reservoir at temperature T1. A heat pump is the same as refrigerator. What term we use depends on the purpose of the device. If the purpose is to cool a portion of a space like inside a chamber and higher temperature reservoirs in the surrounding, we call the device a refrigerator. If the idea is to pump heat into a portion of a space, a room in a building, when outside environment is cold, the device is called a heat pump. In a refrigerator, the working substance, usually in gaseous form, goes through the following steps. A. Sudden expansion of the gas from high to low pressure, which cools it and converts it into a vapor-liquid mixture. B. Absorption by a cold fluid of heat from the region to be cooled, converting it into vapor. C. Heating up of the vapor due to external work done on the system and D. Release of heat by the vapor to the surroundings, bringing it to the initial state and completing the cycle. The coefficient of performance alpha of a refrigerator is given by Q2 by W, where Q2 is the heat extracted from the cold reservoir and W is the work done on the system, the refrigerant. Alpha for heat pump is defined as Q1 by W. Note that while eta by definition can never exceed 1, alpha can be greater than 1. By energy conservation, the heat released to the hot reservoir is Q1 is equals to W plus Q2. In a heat engine, heat cannot be fully converted to work. Likewise, a refrigerator cannot work without some external work done on the system that is coefficient of performance cannot be infinite second law of thermodynamics the first law of thermodynamics is the principle of conservation of energy common experience shows that there are many conceivable processes that are perfectly allowed by the first law and yet are never observed for example, nobody has ever seen a book lying on a table, jumping to a height by itself. But such a thing would be possible if the principle of conservation of energy were the only restriction. The table could cool spontaneously, converting some of its internal energy into an equal amount of mechanical energy of book which could then hop to a height with potential energy equal to the mechanical energy it acquired. But this never happens. Clearly some additional basic principles of nature forbids the above even though it satisfies the energy conservation principle. This principle, which disallows many phenomena consistent with the first law of thermodynamics, is known as the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics gives a fundamental limitations to the efficiency of a heat engine and the coefficient of performance of a refrigerator. In simple terms, it says that the efficiency of a heat engine can never be unity. According to this equation, this implies that heat released to the cold reservoir can never be made zero. For a refrigerator, the second law says that the coefficient of performance can never be infinite. According to the equation 12.21, this implies the external work W can never be zero. The following two statements, one due to Kelvin and Planck denying the possibility of a perfect heat engine and another due to Clausius denying the possibility of a perfect refrigerator or heat pump are a concise summary of these observations. Second law of thermodynamics Kelvin Planck statement No process is possible whose sole result is the absorption of heat from a reservoir and complete conversion of heat into work. 
Colossus statement No process is possible whose sole result is the transfer of heat from a colder object to a hotter object It can be proved that the two statements above are completely equivalent Reversible and irreversible process Imagine some process in which a thermodynamic system goes from an initial state I to a final state F. During the process, the system absorbs heat Q from the surroundings and performs work W on it. Can we reverse this process and bring both the systems and surroundings to their initial states with no other effect anywhere? Experience suggests that for most process in nature this is not possible. The spontaneous process of nature are irreversible. Several examples can be cited. The base of the oven is hotter than its other parts. When the vessel is removed, heat is transferred from the base to other parts, bringing the vessel to a uniform temperature, which in due course cools to the temperature of the surroundings. The process cannot be reversed. A part of the vessel will not get cooler spontaneously and warm up the base. It will violate the second law of thermodynamics. If it did, the free expansion of gas is irreversible. The combustion reaction of a mixture of petrol and air ignited by a spark cannot be reversed. Cooking gas leaked from a gas cylinder in a kitchen diffuses to the entire room. The diffusion process will not spontaneously reverse and bring the gas back to the cylinder. The stirring of a liquid in thermal contact with the reservoir will convert the work done into heat, increasing the internal energy of the reservoir. The process cannot be reversed exactly, otherwise it would amount to conversion of heat entirely to work, violating the second law of thermodynamics. Irreversibility is a rule rather than exception in nature. Irreversibility arises mainly from two causes. One, many processes like a free expansion or an explosive chemical reaction take the system to non-equilibrium states. Two, most process involves friction, viscosity and other dissipative effects. Example, a moving body coming to stop and losing its mechanical energy as heat to the floor and the body. A rotating blade in a liquid coming to a stop due to viscosity and losing its mechanical energy with corresponding gain in the internal energy of the liquid. Since dissipative effects are present everywhere and can be minimized but not fully eliminated, most processes that we deal with are irreversible. A thermodynamic process, state I to state F, is reversible if the process can be turned back such that both the systems and the surroundings return to their original state, with no other change anywhere else in the universe. From the preceding discussion, a reversible process is an idealized notion. A process is reversible only if it is quasi-static, system in equilibrium with surroundings at every stage, and there are no dissipative effects. For example, a quasi-static isothermal expansion of an ideal gas in a cylinder fitted with a frictionless movable piston is a reversible process. Why is reversibility such a basic concept in thermodynamics? As we have seen, one of the concerns of thermodynamics is the efficiency with which heat can be converted into work. The second law of thermodynamics rules out the possibility of a perfect heat engine with 100% efficiency. But what is the highest efficiency possible of a heat engine working between the two reservoirs at temperature T1 and T2? It turns out that a heat engine based on idealized reversible process achieves the highest efficiency possible. All the other engines involving irreversibility in any way, as would be the case of practical engines, have lower than this limiting efficiency. Care not engine. Suppose we have a hot reservoir at temperature T1 and a cold reservoir at temperature T2. 
what is the maximum efficiency possible for a heat engine operating between the two reservoirs and what cycle of process should be adopted to achieve the maximum efficiency. Sadi Carnot, a French engineer, first considered this equation in 1824. Interestingly, Carnot arrived at a correct answer, even though the basic concepts of heat and thermodynamics had yet to be firmly established. We expect the ideal engine operating between two temperatures to be a reversible engine. Irreversibility is associated with dissipative effects, as remarked in preceding section, and lowers efficiency. A process is reversible if it is quasi-static and non-dissipative. We have seen that a process is not quasi-static if it involves finite temperature difference between the systems and the reservoir. This implies that in a reversible heat engine operating between two temperatures, heat should be absorbed from the hot reservoir isothermally and released to the cold reservoir isothermally. We thus have identified two steps of reversible heat engine. The isothermal process at temperature T1 absorbing heat Q1 from hot reservoir and another isothermal process at temperature T2 releasing heat Q2 to the cold reservoir. To complete a cycle, we need to take the system from temperature T1 to T2 and then back from temperature T2 to T1. Which processes should we employ for this purpose that are reversible? A little reflection show that we can only adopt reversible adiabatic process for these purpose, which involve no heat flow from any reservoir. If we employ any other process that is non-adiabatic, say an isochoric process to take the system from one temperature to another, we shall need a series of reservoir in the temperature range T2 to T1 to ensure that each state the process is quasi-static. Remember again that for a purpose to be quasi-static and reversible, there should be no finite temperature difference between the system and the reservoir. But we are considering a reversible engine that operates between only two temperatures. This adiabatic process must bring about the temperature change in the system from T1 to T2 and T2 to T1 in this engine. A reversible heat engine operating between two temperatures is called a Carnot engine. We have just argued that such an engine must have the following sequence of steps constituting one cycle called the Carnot cycle, shown in figure 12.11. We have taken the working substance of the Carnot engine to be an ideal gas. Step 1 to 2 Isothermal expansion of the gas taking its state from P1 V1 T1 to P2 V2 T1. The heat absorbed by the gas Q1 from the reservoir at temperature T1 is given by equation 12.12. .12. It is also the work done W1 by 2 by the gas on environment w1 to 2 is equals to q1 is equals to qr t1 natural log v2 by v1 step 2 to 3 adiabatic expansion of the gas from p2 v2 t1 to p3 v3 t2 step 3 to 4 isothermal expansion of the gas from p3 v3 t2 to p4 v4 t2 Heat released Q2 by the gas to the reservoir at temperature T2 is given by equation 12.12. .12. This is also the work done W3 to 4 on the gas by environment. Step 4 to 1. Adiabatic compression of the gas from P4 V4 T2 to P1 V1 T1. The total work done by the gas in one complete cycle is W is equals to mu R T1 natural log V2 by V1 minus mu R T2 natural log V3 by V4. Using all the equations, we get eta is equals to 
1 minus T2 by T1 in Carnot engine. We have already seen that a Carnot engine is a reversible engine. Indeed, it is the only reversible engine possible that works between two reservoirs at different temperature. Each step of the Carnot cycle is given in figure 12.11 can be reversed. This will amount to taking heat Q2 from the cold reservoir at T2, doing work W on the system, and transferring heat Q1 to the hot reservoir. This will be our reversible refrigerator. We next establish the important result, sometimes called Carnot's theorem, that A, working B, to given temperatures T1 and T2 of hot and cold reservoirs respectively. No engines have efficiency more than that of the Carnot engine, and b the efficiency of the Carnot engine is independent of the nature of the working substance. To prove the result A, imagine a reversible Carnot engine R and an irreversible engine I working between the same source hot reservoir and the sink cold reservoir. Let us couple the engines I and R in such a way so that I acts like a heat engine and R acts like a refrigerator. Let I absorb heat Q1 from the source Deliver work W dash and release the heat Q1 minus W dash to the sink. We arrange so that R returns to the same heat Q1 to the source, taking heat Q2 from the sink and requiring work W is equals to Q1 minus Q2 to be done on it. Now suppose eta R is less than eta I. That is, if R were to act as an engine, it would give less work output than that of I. That is, W is less than W dash for a given Q1, with R acting like a refrigerator. This would mean Q2 is equals to Q1 minus WQ is greater than Q1 minus W dash. Thus, on the whole, the coupled IMR system extracts heat. Q1 minus W minus Q1 minus W dash is equals to W dash minus W from the cold reservoir and delivers the same amount of work in one cycle without any change in the source or anywhere else. This is clearly against the Kelvin Planck statement. Hence, the assertion eta is more than eta r is wrong no engine have efficiency greater than that of the carnot engine a similar argument can be constructed to show that a reversible engine with a particular substance cannot be more efficient than one using another substance maximum efficiency of a carnot engine given by the equation 12.32 is independent of the nature of the system performing the Carnot cycle of operations. Thus, we are justified in using an ideal gas as a system in calculation of efficiency eta of a Carnot engine. The ideal gas has a simple equation of state which allows us to readily calculate eta, but the final results of eta is true for any Carnot engine. This final remark shows that in a Carnot cycle, Q1 by Q2 is equals to T1 by T2 in a universal relation independent of nature of the system. Here Q1 and Q2 are respectively the heat absorbed and released isothermally from the hot and to the cold reservoirs in a Carnot engine. Equation 12.33 that is Q1 by Q2 is equals to T1 by T2 can therefore be used as a relation to define a truly universal thermodynamic temperature scale that is dependent of any particular properties of the system used in the Carnot cycle. Of course, for an ideal gas as working substance, this universal temperature is same as the ideal gas temperature introduced in section 12.11. Summary 
The Zeroth law of thermodynamics state that two systems in thermal equilibrium with a third system are in thermal equilibrium with each other. The Zeroth law leads to the concept of temperature. Internal energy of a system is the sum of kinetic energy and potential energies of molecular constituents of the system. It does not include the overall kinetic energy of the system. Heat and work are the two modes of energy transfer to the system heat and energy transfer arising due to the temperature difference between the system and surroundings work is energy transfer brought about by other means such as moving the piston of a cylinder containing the gas by raising or lowering some weight connected to it the first law of thermodynamics is the general law of conservation of energy applied to any system in which energy transfer from or to the surroundings through heat and work is taken into account. It states that delta Q is equal to delta U plus delta W, where delta Q is the heat supplied to the system, delta W is the work done by the system, and delta U is the change in the internal energy of the system. The specific heat capacity of a substance is defined by S is equals to 1 by M delta Q by delta T, where M is the mass of the substance and delta Q is the heat required to change its temperature by delta T. The molar specific heat capacity of a substance is defined by C is equals to 1 by mu into delta Q by delta T, where mu is the number of moles of the substance. For a solid, the law of equipartition of energy gives C is equals to 3R, which generally agrees with the experiment at ordinary temperature. Calorie is the old unit of heat. One calorie is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of water from 14.5 degrees Celsius to 15.5 degrees Celsius. One calorie is equal to 4.186 joules. For an ideal gas, the molar specific heat capacities at constant pressure and volume satisfies the relation Cp minus Cv is equal to R, where R is the universal gas constant. Equilibrium state of thermodynamic system are described by the state variables. The value of the state variable depends only on particular state, not on the path used to arrive that state. Examples of the state variables are pressure, volume, temperature, and mass. Heat and work are not state variables. The equation of a state like the ideal gas equation PV is equal to mu RT is a relation correcting different state variables. A quasi-static process is an infinitely slow process such that the system remains in thermal and mechanical equilibrium with its surroundings throughout. In a quasi-static process, the, the pressure and the temperature of the environment can differ from those of the system only infinitesimally. In an isothermal expansion of ideal gas, from volume V1 to V2 at temperature T, the heat absorbed Q equals the work done W by the gas, each given by Q is equals to W is equals to mu RT, natural log V2 by V1. In an adiabatic process of an ideal gas, PV to the power gamma is equals to constant. Heat engine is a device in which the system undergoes a cyclic process resulting in conversion of heat into work. If Q1 is the heat absorbed from the source, Q2 is the heat released to the sink and work output in one cycle W, the efficiency eta of the engine is eta is equals to 1 minus Q2 by Q1. 
in a refrigerator or a heat pump the system extracts heat q2 from the cold reservoir and release q1 amount of heat to the hot reservoir with work done w on the system the coefficient of performance of refrigerator is given by alpha is equals to q2 by w is equals to q2 upon q1 minus q2 the second law of thermodynamics disallows some processes consistent with first law of thermodynamics it states kelvin planck statement no process is possible whose sole result is absorption of heat from a reservoir and completion conversion of heat into work Clausius statement no process is possible whose sole result is the transfer of heat from the colder object to a hotter object but simply the second law implies that no heat engine can have efficiency eta equal to 1 or no refrigerator can have coefficient of performance alpha equal to infinity a process is reversible if it can be reversed such that both the systems and surroundings return to the original state with no other change anywhere else in the universe a spontaneous reaction of the nature are irreversible the idealized reversible process is a quasi static process with no dissipative factors such as friction viscosity etc Carnot engine is a reversible engine operating between two temperatures T1 source and T2 sink the carnot cycle consists of two isothermal process connected by two adiabatic process the efficiency of the carnot engine is given by eta is equals to 1 minus T2 by T1 If Q is greater than 0 heat is added to the system if Q is less than 0 heat is removed to the system if W is greater than 0 work is done by the system if W is less than 0 work is done on the system points to ponder 1 Temperature of a body is related to its average internal energy and not to the kinetic energy of motion of its center of mass. A bullet fired from the gun is not at a higher temperature because of its high speed. 2. Equilibrium in thermodynamics refers to the situation when macroscopic variables describing thermodynamic state of a system do not depend on time. Equilibrium of a system in mechanics means the net external force and torque on the systems are zero. In a state of thermodynamic equilibrium, the microscopic constituents of a system are not in equilibrium. Heat capacity in general depends on the process the system goes through when heat is supplied. Fifth, an isothermal quasi-static process, heat is absorbed or given out by the system even though at every stage the gas has same temperature as that of the surrounding reservoir this is possible because of infinitesimal difference in temperature between systems and reservoir